YouTube, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I got some good information for y'all. Let's go ahead and jump into this video. All right, guys, what is going on, guys? Yo, 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 yo. We got a good, interesting article, you feel what I'm saying? Over from our good friends over at CBR.com. Come, you feel what I'm saying, guys? Remember, we know our lore. A note. We. <laughs> what did I just say? I don't know. What did I? I don't know what I just said. But we know our lore enough to know whether or not it is fact or false. Okay. So, guys, what are we looking at today? What are they telling us about today? Guys, go ahead and take a look. I know you've seen it in the title. Take a look at the screen now. Okay. We got it. Why Naruto's absence in Boruto to Blue Vortex actually makes Kanoa better, okay? Now, I know a lot of you are thinking like, what? Naruto's the main character. You feel what I'm saying? The main dude we grew up with. How could deleting him or erasing him make Konoha any better? Remind you, we gonna see if they know what they talking about, whether or not this actually seems cool or not. You feel what I'm saying? Now, guys, when it comes to these type of articles, they like to give summaries. I'm going to give the summary at the end, okay? So that way, you know what I mean? Ain't no point in reading the article if you, you feel what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, let's go on ahead and get started. The second chapter of Boruto, Two Blue Vortex, shows why Konoha is better off without Naruto and under Kawaki in one major aspect of life and war. When the Boruto series removed Naruto from the main story, it kickstarted a series of dominoes that changed Konoha in a big way. Kawaki used Ida to rewrite reality, making people think Kawaki was Naruto's son and that Boruto murdered the Hokage. It created a new period with Kawaki as Konoha's prince, in a sense, running the village while hiding how he while hiding how he stored away Naruto and Hinata in a secret dimension. Daiko Kuten, okay? Baruto, two blue vortex, picks up on the drama three years later with Kanoa trying to kill Baruto. The military is also hunting Sasuke, who defected to mentor and protect Baruto. However, as chapter number two unfolds, while many would assume the Hidden Leaf would be in a state of disarray, it's actually better off in terms of order and structure, okay? Let's see what they talking about here. Let's see what they talking about here, bruh. They state that in Boruto 2 Blue Vortex, it has an impressive tuning squad, okay? Let's see what they talking about. Code invades with the Claw Grime army, using these ten-tailed clones to wreak havoc. He wants to draw Boruto out and believes mass casualties and collateral damage will be enough to lure Boruto into a fight. As the monsters attack, the young shinobi squad jumps into action to save their village. However, they're synced up and actually working in tandem pretty well, something Code didn't expect. Enojin uses his giant eagle and aerial attacks pretty niftily. Chocho also smashes a ton of the monsters around, while Shikadai uses his shadow paralysis jutsu to trap a ton of them, making the creatures easy targets. It sets up Kawaki to enter the fray and take a bunch out as well. The outstanding aspect is that this is an unprecedented shift in how the young shinobi operated. In Naruto's time, they weren't a well-oiled machine. It's why Konoha struggled to fight the Akatsuki, chase Sasuke's rogue squad, and then battle the army that Madara and Kaguya brought to life. Now, there's one thing in here that I'm hoping that they actually talk about, and I'm hoping they talk about the Hokage, okay? Continuing on, sure, Konoha had the Anbu and other senior soldiers, but in those fights, they needed all hands on deck, true. Thankfully, Naruto was able to rally everyone when he was a teen in the Shippuden era. He used Kudama's power and got everyone to unite, including the other villages. The death toll was high, though. It's why when Naruto became Hokage, he didn't want a repeat of the bloodshed. That said, he failed to perfect the fire of youth and the weapons they could have been, okay? I, I, I feel like I could agree with that. I feel like I could agree with that. Let's jump into it, okay? Boruto 2 Blue Vortex highlights a Naruto era flaw. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Now, one has to understand the road Naruto walked. He saw a lot of death and destruction as a kid. 
is why he didn't want to plunge kids into a life of war too soon. He saw how I broke Sasuke, turned him against Kona due to the loss of the Uchiha clan, and even had Sarutobi Hiruzen, the third Hokage, overseeing Itachi murdering his own people. Even Kakashi lost himself in the darkness a bit with the Anbu, becoming too harsh even towards his own teammates. Naruto wanted to change this, believing the younglings should be blooded in much later on. But that was a mistake because there were still threats existing that required the teens to be the second line of defense. That is so true, bro. Oh my goodness. The Otsutsuki aliens are a prime example, as they could destroy the world at the drop of a hat. When they came though, Boruto, Naruto, and Sasuke were the only ones who could stop them. It's why Kawaki wants Boruto dead, so Momoshiki can't be resurrected in Boruto's body. It led to Kawaki ensuring Kona has one main purpose, going the extra mile as a unified army. No matter who the enemy is, Kawaki has the new Hokage Shikamaru, making the younglings more aggressive, proactive, and a squad that follows logic and evidence, not emotions. With a focus on one on one crew now, Boruto and Sasuke, they're a unit akin to the Anbu, and who in Naruto's time would have been useful for tyrants of the old. If Naruto's crew was this effective as teens, the era of peace they sought may have come earlier, and the likes of Asuma and Hiruzen might still be alive. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm glad. I'm glad that they talked about it because me personally, I definitely feel as though with Shikamaru's intellect giving the push of Kawaki and what happened, that is, I'm, I'm yeah, you hit it. You hit it on the head. You hit it on the head. I was glad you you said something about Shikamaru and Kawaki's unison and how they felt making this i agree i agree i agree let's jump right back into it boruto two blue vortex shows kawaki's strength i truly believe that this one was a little bit of a hit and miss throughout the chapter now if they show it out throughout the animation then it'll make it better but let's go on ahead and talk about it that's not to say naruto isn't a bad leader he's passed down wisdom compassion and empathy it's why Kano Amaru wants to be Hokage, as well as Mirai and Sarada. But in this universe, something more than warmth is needed. Kawaki understands that, and while he's cold, he's instilled discipline beyond belief. So much so that both generations of Shinobi are working well with each other. It compounds that Naruto made Konoha too soft. Bro, I'm not gonna lie, I do have to agree with that. I do have to agree with that because when the young generation came in and Momoshiki and them dropped down bro the fact that only three of them was able to handle the gods I understand they're gods I get it they're gods they're on a whole different absolute level but bro Naruto and Sasuke were gods bro you feel what I'm saying you mean to tell me they couldn't pass down that wisdom straight down to the kids so they could have been gods too bro because you know how the next generation always is they're faster smarter more uh you feel what I'm saying more agile and everything like that so Everything of the old would have been passed down to the new and they would have got it like this and probably perfected it in their own style like this, bro. So, yeah, I do got to agree with the fact that Naruto made Kanoa so soft, bro, so soft. If Sasuke was, bro, that's why I understand why if Sasuke was made the Hokage instead of Naruto, bro, Kanoa would have been a military, bro, military, military, bro. My father, my father. Naruto's flaw is why the aliens invaded and caused so much trouble. Naruto and his forces couldn't sense Momoshiki, Kinshiki, Urashiki, and Tonari. Not to mention, they had no response when Ishiki and Kata hunted them down. These villains all use Naruto's dream of peace to their advantage. Kawaki understands war and the necessary evils, however. This includes using the youth as sharp blades. It starts with the Boruto on the lamb. He and Sasuke are the first test. Given Kona has steeled up over the years and had no major incursions, it's proof Kawaki is doing something right with the new guard, bruh. Ultimately, it's all about circumstances. Kawaki has a streamlined focus, so he can allocate and dedicate all resources efficiently. Given he was a child soldier, he understands the role the kids play. These shinobi are all way powerful, so he can't squander them. It's a cruel attitude and one Naruto would never abide by, but Kawaki doesn't care. He has a new home and a new family and doesn't mind risking the youth to save things. It's to clean the place up and then create a window to bring Naruto and his wife back. In the end, he feels justified and whether readers agree, Kawaki is getting results with different eras of Shinobi who are enjoying their new 
Rose. Bro, I cannot lie to you. This article, I definitely have to get behind, bro. Yo, not stating that Naruto was a bad leader. Because genuinely, you we all saw the type of time Naruto was on. You feel what I'm saying? We watched that man grow up. So to sit here and say he was a bad leader is beyond left. You feel what I'm saying? But I can agree that during his absence, you definitely can see where in the beginning when Naruto was around, how destruction and everything kept coming because of the fact that couldn't sense anything, couldn't do anything. You feel what I'm saying? And mind you, this is even further more proof because Kurama, you guys remember Kurama even came out. And stated when Naruto went up against Momoshiki, he said, bro, you rusty, bro. He told him, you rusty, you ain't fighting mad long, bro. Which only goes to show that the, the era of peace, the era of peace, Sasuke was right to tell Naruto, like, I believe it was Sasuke who told Naruto that during the times of peace, you should have been training and actually getting things up like on the on a par type level you feel what i'm saying rather than thinking that this piece was going to be everlasting you feel what i'm saying that is why konoha was so soft is because all them years that peace was going around naruto got comfortable you feel what i'm saying he didn't feel the need he had to fight he didn't feel like he needed to keep his joints and his his energy and jutsus and peak proficiency because at the end of the day he felt as though like which is cool mindset to have he felt like he could take everything on by itself because he's been doing it for so long. Granted, you're not the brick wall to everything, Naruto. So that's why Konoha became soft. I definitely agree with this article and what it states. Let's move on to the summary. For those of you who like that good old synopsis, you feel what I'm saying? And want to crunch it all down. You feel what I'm saying? Let's talk about it. The summary meaning, what do we get from this article? You feel what I'm saying? What were the main points talked about? Okay. Number one, Boruto 2 Blue Vortex showcases Konoha's improved order and structure despite the absence of Naruto as the young Shinobi squad works together effectively to defend the village. Agree. 100% agree. You feel what I'm saying? Number two, Naruto's approach of delaying the younglings' involvement in war was a mistake as threats like the Otsutsuki aliens cannot be stopped without the second line of defense, which includes Boruto and Sasuke. Again, factual. You feel what I'm saying? True. Again, the reason as to why I said if Sasuke was made the Hokage instead of Naruto, they would have been more military efficient and, and things like this, I guarantee you would not have happened. You feel what I'm saying? And number three, Kawaki's disciplined and aggressive leadership style focused on creating a unified army proves more effective in defending Kona and achieving results than Naruto's more compassionate approach. Again, I agree. I agree. Naruto got way too comfortable and he got way too rusty. You feel what I'm saying? As stated and backed up by the Nine Tails Kurama himself. All right. In the battle versus Momo Shiki. Okay, guys, there you have it. You feel what I'm saying? I truly can get behind this. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't care what nobody say. And if you're not getting behind this, I don't know what, what you think. But I ain't coming at you. Let me know in the comment section below if you disagree with this. If you disagree with this, I got to know your mindset. Because me personally, I agree with this full force. Naruto is making them soft, bro. Kawaki and Shikamaru together with them. Yeah, they got something going on, bro. They got something going on. But guys, there you have it. This lets us know how Konoha is better without Naruto. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, you already know what to do. Don't be afraid to hover and haunt that like button. Subscribe today, become part of Soul Gang. Team Nephilim, let's get it. Tap that notification bell to know each. And every single time I'm uploading these videos, baby. And guys, remember to be good at the game. You got to kill with skill. And until our next nightmare. Guys, did y'all see I forgot how to how to move to my own outro? Bro, I don't know what I just did. Looked like I had a seizure. Go on ahead and run that back because that was crazy. But there you got it, guys. Peace, y'all. Peace.